Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back with another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Monday, July 30th. We're almost to the next month after July. Is that September? I believe that's September, but maybe not. <laughs> I never learned in my months. Uh, I could look at my calendar, actually, and it'll tell me if I, maybe I, if I paid it. August, yeah. Uh, I thought it was September because I'm recording footage for September. Slowly, I hope, moving forward, making more progress towards getting footage done. Um, however, certainly over the course of 2018, I am not going to succeed in my goal of having footage come out uh, and be pre-recorded six months in advance to a year in advance, which is what I would have preferred it to be. Uh, but maybe 2019 that will happen, assuming 2019 still happens with YouTube and YouTube doesn't shut itself down. I was on a win streak here on Hearthstone, so now I need to switch to playing as priests. And if I can stay on this win streak, that would be great, because then I might get up to rank 18. Do I particularly care if I win? Oh, we're on the European account. Uh, not really. There's there's not a big difference between ending the month, which I'm about to end, I suppose. Uh, I guess today might be the last day or the second to last day. I also don't know how many days are in, in July. Anduin uh, versus Anduin. I always felt like that information was so unimportant, particularly uh, because as a kid in school, you wake up, your parents tell you you have to go to school. You go, I don't want to go to school, and they go, too bad. And it's like, so what What does it matter if, if they tell you that on January 1st or if they tell you that on December uh, 20th? Like, the, it, what's the difference? Time, is time is a concept that, that does not matter when you have no control over what you're doing with your life. As kids do not have any control over what they're doing in their life. It makes more sense as you get older because then it starts to to make more, be more important. Uh, you start wanting to, uh, start wanting to or having to remember other people's birthdays and and other specific special events instead of just having uh, parents effectively act as your uh, as your secretary. And then I guess if you get really successful and can af can actually have a secretary, uh, somebody that's running your schedule for you, then you can at that point as an adult get back to the point where it doesn't matter what day it is. Uh, Moving on, PC Gamer has an article, Capcom explains why Monster Hunter World at port is CPU heavy. Uh, here's, here's one reason it's a demanding port. I imagine a big part of that is Capcom does not know how to program for PC games yet. And I say yet because I feel like just in general the video game industry in Japan is going to get better and better and making PC ports as they continue to actually make PC ports. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is Monster Hunter World is probably uh, probably using a lot of AIs in the monsters. Like that—that's where you would want your CPU to go to is is to have the monsters. Uh, smart and impressive uh, but this argument says uh, says the answer is or at least uh, to eliminate interstitial loading uh, I, I don't know if that's the right term interstitial I need to look up the definition of that uh, thank you let's see search interstitial of forming or occupying interstices that is not that's not helpful at all. 
Like, if you have to reference a different word, that's not. Interstances. An intervening space, a small and narrow space, an interval between things oh, apart. Uh, hmm. So, okay. Wow. Sex oh, hallways, connecting parts. Wow. Like, that, that's a five dollar oh, way. Let's go ahead and squelch this guy. Mind if I roll me? Hmm. So, to eliminate interstitial loading during gameplay, Monster Hunter World loads the entire level into memory. In addition to manage assets, loaded into memory keeps track of the monster's interactions, health status, environment, objects, manages the level of display, I think it says LOD, and object calling, uh, then maybe it doesn't stand for level display, that might stand for something like light pointed display or something like that. Let's see, what, what can we do? We can hit that. And then heal that again. Uh, calculates collision detection and physics simulation and tons of other background telemetry stuff that you don't see. Yeah, it requires a CPU. Uh, that this answer is extremely, extremely boilerplate in which they're just explaining what video games do, <laughs> what a 3D video game and a 3D world does. Like all games do this, so this is a non-answer in a lot of words. Uh, the only thing that sticks out as slightly odd, and I don't know how odd you really even are gonna take it. Uh, the phrase background telemetry data uh, might indicate that there's a level of like spying going on For me. Uh, certainly a lot of games basically 100% spy on you uh, what you're doing in the game it's not unheard of. It, it is not really acceptable if they're spying on what you're doing outside of the game. But anti-cheat software are basically spying on you to see if you're cheating. Uh, a lot of other ones are just like we're we're seeing if this game is uh, crashing a lot for you or in some other way giving you a bad experience so we know what to patch later um, so, so there's reasons for it that, but it, it's not a clean hands approach often in which they, they come to you and they show your hands and look our hands are clean this is what we're doing and this is why we're doing it uh, the next quote here is well the MT framework engine has been around for ages. It does a good job in distributing CPU cycles and load balancing tasks across all available cores and threads. The engine itself is optimized for x86 instruction set, is highly scalable, and loosely speaking, is platform agnostic regardless of PC or console platform, so long as it conforms to the x86 instruction set. Uh, which the x86 instruction set is uh, a very generic term for what a regular PC uses and honestly it's probably not accurate to, to say what a modern processor uses as an x86 instruction set uh, because there's a lot of other things that you could be up using. Uh, things that have been added to it uh, that, that are outside of that. And 
Yeah. It, it, that's a weird term to use in a general response. But also, it is definitely just a non non answer. Just saying a lot of uh, things. Uh, the thing that stands out from this long response is that the MT framework engine has been around for ages. One, I haven't heard of the MT framework engine. And the two, I hear you just told me it's been around for ages, which makes me heavily suspect that it's not up to snuff anymore. Yep, and my win streak is gonna be ruined here. Uh, Monster Hunter World comes out on PC on August 9th, so August 9th will be the day in which we see if it's really demanding. This is, uh, or how demanding it is. Th this will be the point where we see if maybe they're trying to cover their, cover their butts. Uh, because they've just made a bad PC port because that's what this indicates certainly is that they've made a bad PC port it's not gonna play smoothly perhaps because they are so focused on the Japanese market and the PS4 version perhaps because uh, they're just not good at making PC version games uh, inherently uh, Unreal would probably be a better framework for them to move to. Uh, it would. It might be a good idea if every, almost every game goes to Unreal. And just, just get on the same same platforms. Let's make make the cross programming work a little bit better. Moving on to the next story, PC Gamer has an article, EA wants crossplay for its big franchises and may also experiment with free-to-play games. Um, so, that totally makes sense. Now, remember that EA really had nothing to show at E3. So their big franchises now are like FIFA, Battlefield, Battlefront. Um, I'm not sure there's much more to even list. Uh, there's probably a football game in there. There might be a basketball game in there. But that's kind of it. Greetings. And so, of course, all, all of them... All those games would benefit greatly with cross-platform play and allowing people on... On like PlayStation to play people on Xbox and Switch is is the desire and the the idea that EA may experiment with free to play games is kind of weird because they've already been experimenting with the free to play trappings in games certainly loot boxes and such so the only thing they're saying here is they might experiment with not ripping you off and making you pay for FIFA before they rip you off and make you pay for all the uh, DLC and card packs on uh, the FIFA that has team packs or whatever they're called. Uh, We've got a game on Steam called Before Nightfall. It's a small survival game where you will be tested for speed and prudence. It's mostly positive at 72% of 11 users. And that, that's a small number, certainly. Although, the idea here isn't a terrible thought. The, let's make a survival game ripoff, basically. But in this instance, let's let's have it set as a speedrun experience where uh, I don't need any of you. Where where there's probably a distinct 
end to it. Uh, there was a Peter Mall new game like that where you were picking up things as you were walking down a path and eventually you would walk down the path and and you'd make it to the end and that, that was kind of the end of the game. So it had item collection and you would get to campsites and talk to people and trade things and upgrade like your shoes and your clothing so that you can walk further. Uh, this game seems similar to that a little bit where you're getting to places where there are campfires and Do my uh, For me. and then that seems to be your checkpoint. But honestly before nightfall still feels like it is just kind of a boring game. It's 10% off for 89 cents. It's just an interesting idea. Uh, see, according to SteamSpy.com, uh, the average playtime is zero hours and zero minutes. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we hit this. I hope you like my invention. This. And I could have played that. And play that. Injured? Name the term. We have a not recommended review for this game. I it says I wanted this game to be good, but really it's just too basic. The environment too looks great, although it's a bit monochrome. But the only thing to do is run around and pick up logs, meaning you press E, and they disappear with no effect, no inventory, no animations. Then you run back and press E to put the logs in the fire. That's it. There's no fire details. Nothing visually changes when you feel the fire. The rolling fire looks identical to one about to go out. Nothing ever happens in the game, just snow with some wind sounds and some health bars to look at. There are definitely YouTubers that are just reviewing every game that comes out. And that's, I guess, a niche, certainly. Just review every single game that comes out and and see if that gets you views and then put links to your videos in in the reviews which I think probably Steam should stop allowing that like no links to YouTube uh, in your reviews or My allow people to flag it and more people flagging it but I, I bet nobody would ever bother right to away. flag it if they did Next game we have on Steam is called Bernie's Nightmare. It looks like it's another one of these very low effort horror Ready games. Um, the animation doesn't look good. In fact, the whole thing looks like it is buggy as can be. Even in the video, it doesn't look like it's well made. It's 15% off for $1.69. I don't think I need to say anything more about Bernie's Nightmare. It's badly animated, stuck in a room, running around looking for objects and, and ways to, I assume, escape the room while well, maybe something is chasing you. I don't even know why you'd call it Bernie's Nightmare. 15% off for $1.69. Astonishing! So we haven't covered a lot of games. We're covering more stories. PC Gamer has their weekly article, five new Steam games you probably missed this week. Uh, one called Element. I guess I'll double check to see if I did see that. Uh, one called the Swordsman X, which maybe I didn't miss that. How how am I missing games? One called Liminal. And Symbolance. I think I think we definitely talked about Symbolance. 
I hope you like my invention. Hmm. You are the shadow. I can't do that. Just play all the cards. Astonishing. One called the Helping Hand. I think we probably talked about several of these. Let's see. Element is rate, rated 91% positive with 12 users. It says it's an action and strategy game. Uh, Element is a real-time strategy space game for people who don't have time to play real-time strategy space games. Generate energy, mine elements, build attacks and defense, and then destroy the enemy with the while maintaining balance between earth, air, and water. Element looks kind of pretty and it is selling itself on an interesting concept. I would classify myself as one of the people who don't have time to play real time and real time strategy well space played. games. That being said, selling your game like that, though, you're, you're basically just selling I've made a small game, but you should buy it because it's small uh, and won't take much of your time, and that's not a very good s way to sell a game. Elements $11.99, and I think I'll just immediately pass on it. Um, let's see. We can play a Warlock and see if we can win there. Uh, go ahead and keep on playing. Uh, the Swordsman X is mixed reviews, 61% of 332 user reviews. And it's an early access massively multiplayer action RPG. And it's online multiplayer and that's why I didn't pay any attention to it and immediately forgot it. It's 15% off for $21.24. And while it does look pretty, certainly it is also a Chinese game that could easily just be a abandoned project uh, early on and just not not ever be finished and it's a multiplayer game which is a problem. Liminal is mostly positive 76% of 17 users and this was a puzzle game I believe I wishlisted this one already my Liminal's mind build bending puzzle game where every door is a change in perspective and destination. And it is early access and free. So maybe because it was free, that was why well, I forgot about it. Also though I've just not been sleeping well for the past week, so it's possible that I saw a lot of games and have forgotten about them. We have Libby on the chat saying, hey, uh, how are ya? you? I'm doing a lot better, certain certainly, once I finally sort of got over my most recent bout of insomnia. Uh, I'm doing, doing better today than I did uh, pretty much, I think, all last week or, or maybe the week before. Uh, I've definitely got some work to do that, that I look forward to is playing some more Borderlands 2 and then moving into the pre-recording of footage for Halloween month of October um, let's, let's just play this the sun has set for me um Guess we'll do that. Uh, Semblance, I'm pretty sure I talked about Semblance is a very interesting looking game where it has a unique art style that I'm not sure fully fits what you're actually doing in the game. It, because what you're doing is platforming and morphing the world. So there are specific parts in the world that can be bent uh, parts of the platforms you're standing on and so you can shift the walls basically to get 
create ramps to get where you want to go. I think at a certain level this is a simplified Super Meat Boy style game that has more puzzle elements than anything else. Uh, if it goes on too long, a game like Semblance could very possibly annoy me, but as it looks right now, it definitely feels like it's something worth trying. And Helping Hand, I believe, is a uh, Helping Hand is a game where your right hand is broken, as well as all the other bones and muscles in your body. Uh, so, this is like a story related game that's a comedy. And I think basically what you do in the game is uh, you have different options for different finger orientations so you can like flip off somebody or do a thumbs up or something and I think that's the entire gameplay mechanic and that's kind of a crazy gameplay mechanic but I feel like that that's funny enough to to go for it. However, Helping Hand is $8.99, so that's a big ask for what is effectively going to be a a joke scenario. Um, and the animation's alright. It's kind of a flat western animation style. Uh, not great. Certainly, but not terrible. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll be generous and keep an eye on helping hand. See if it gets cheap. Libby says I'm exhausted. Z z z. Okay, well if you're exhausted, maybe try to go to sleep. Uh, don't stay up watching me live. You can always watch my videos later. Uh, as somebody who, ex who suffers from insomnia, I don't want to see other people going through that if they can avoid it, like going through being underslept. Gametsu has an article, Zenkai Zero, Last Beginning Demo, now available in Japan. Zenkai Zero has been talked about several times by Gametsu, as is typical for Gametsu, where they publish between 5 and 10 news articles for every game. Uh, all I'm seeing is a screenshot that I've probably already seen before. Zenkai Zero is a I think half visual novel has half cheap dungeon crawler game. Uh, it's it's coming out for the PS4 and the PS Vita on July 5th in Japan, and it's for the PS4 and PC in the spring of 2019 in North America and Europe. I don't know why they don't just say all of the West or all of America. Uh, what what difference does it make, honestly, if you're To, like maybe maybe they're just trying to be honest there and, and not say well we didn't translate this game to Spanish therefore we're not going to release it in Spain or well Spain's part of Europe I, I meant to say something like South America South American country like Brazil or something uh, we didn't, we didn't translate this into Portuguese or Brazilian, therefore we're only saying Europe as in the English-speaking countries in Europe and America as in North America as in the English-speaking parts of North America, which really would just be 
some parts of Europe and the United States. I, I kind of wish everything would just be worth worldwide release, honestly. Like, or that they were just more accurate and say, we're releasing this worldwide in English. And you can play it or you can't. Uh, we're not targeting any specific countries. Chill out. Doing all of that. Hmm. We have somebody on the chat says, uh, learn playing son, then come back on stream. I know how to play just fine. If you don't like how I'm playing and that's all you're here for, then I would recommend you leave. Uh, right now I'm I'm focusing on delivering the video game news and learning it myself so um, so no I don't spend a lot of focus on Hearthstone I've been very honest about that and I say it at least every week that I don't focus on playing Hearthstone by the way I just won so yeah take that too uh, PC Gamer has an article, Cyberpunk 2077 Quest Designer says it's inherently political. Also just says it discusses why they've made their new R RPG first person. Um, I saw this story getting reported saying Cyberpunk 2077 is inherently political. And they're not wrong. They're probably just getting mistranslated by the extremely biased people that are in the video game media because I think what they think and this is what they did with the newest uh, Wolfenstein game too and the newest Far Cry game is that the, the video game media thinks that when something says it's, it's going to be political or looks like it's going to be political I don't think Far Cry ever even said it was going to be political uh, they think that that inherently means you're going to be talking about Donald Trump and U.S. politics. That's not what I think Cyberpunk 2077 is. I think there will be politics set in a Cyberpunk 2077 world that will touch on the topics that make sense to the story in that time. Um, if they do, in Cyberpunk 2077, have some kind of cyber Trump running around, and it is just Trump bashing the whole time, I don't think very many people are going to want to buy or play that game. Uh, on the other hand, like, uh, if they don't live in a world in Cyberpunk 27 and tell a story that lives in a world that has some political intrigue in it it's not gonna feel very much like a cyberpunk story in general because that's kind of what what akira at least was about and akira is a foundational touchstone of cyberpunk uh, there there was definitely a government agency that was uh, was pulling the strings in akira partially and even before that part is revealed, there's definitely a school system and uh, just a impoverished culture that was established in, in the movie Akira. Uh, so, yeah. So, when you compare the previous works by CD Projekt Red, Witcher 1, Witcher 2, Witcher 3. Like, Witcher 2 is a inherently political game because you're assassinating or accused of assassinating the king throughout that entire store, story. Uh, so, 
there's totally a lot of pol politics there. Also, you're dealing with a faction of of witches in that story, and and that was taking apart. However, when I, as somebody who's played all of Witcher two, and played the main story of Witcher three, there was never a point there where I felt like this was a heavy-handed. Uh, copy and paste criticism of any kind of politics happening in the West. So if Cyberpunk 2077 even does touch upon or reference some politics, Your they're probably going to see. reference the politics of their country, which I believe Chill is out. Finland. So that's not really going to make any sense either. Um... The more controversial thing, by far, will be the uh, the first-person uh, perspective change. The quote here is, it feels like you're moving a camera around if you're in third-person. Um, which, I'm, yeah, okay, that, that is what, that is true, but depending on how the gameplay mechanic works that's where the problem is going to be with first person perspective if first person perspective works perfectly fine in uh, in the, for for the gameplay mechanic that's that's good then no problem if it doesn't then so there definitely is a problem so right now I'm watching the E3 trailer of Cyberpunk 2077 and there seems to be a CD New York style, there seems to be a, uh, yeah it seems almost like the, 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 this is set in a Manhattan style world set in 2077. Uh, I see some police, I see some rich people, I see criminals, so you're going to have the whole sort, I see gang violence, um, you see at least one car. So yeah, to to have a lively city, it inherently I think does have to be political, in the, in the sense that it has politics in that world. I could be wrong, but I th I think they're just totally, totally taking the wrong response. Then this feels like a response that some PR guy would tell the interviewers to make them happy, but then they're going to easily backtrack on it. Uh, when I'm thinking about like Deus Ex Human Revolution, which wasn't made by CD Projekt Red too, like the Deus Ex series, uh, particularly in Human Revolution, totally political game, but it's the politics in the Deus Ex world. It's in a world where conspiracies are all true and there is a secret government. Uh, See. Might as well. I do this, I guess. Yes. And this. Job's done. Let's see. PC Gamer has another article. Social survival game Grimwood out next week. Band together with strangers to survive. This game, Grimwood, looks very odd for its one screenshot. Um, it has like a free open beta, but I don't think it is on Steam. Oh, it is on Steam. Uh, yeah, Grimwood right now, and its free open beta, is mostly positive 79% of 29 users 
However, over the lifetime of its gameplay, it's 69% positive with 263%. So it's slightly improved. But it is this online multiplayer only game, so that's me out. I, I really doubt Grimwood is the game that would. I'm warning you. I'm unstable. Like, I don't think it, it's the game that would unseat something like World of Warcraft and it feels like a game that would really need that kind of player base. Well, that statement on the chat's really irritating. It just shows a lack of, of understanding of what the world needs as far as examples of gameplay if only the best players ever sh were allowed to stream on anything uh, that just is not informative it's not helpful it's not achieving Who the died? goal that i that is the point of my life, channel like victory. i'm so i'm an average video mind. game slightly better than average video game player uh, I have a lot of experience, not particularly great at anything. Uh, if people like Trump and Kriperian, who are big time Hearthstone players, and that's pretty much all they ever play, and they're expert levels, but even at that, they don't win the esports tournaments all the time. Uh, if only those people were the only people streaming. Do you know how annoying it would be for people who are trying to see, like, what is the average experience for other players to relate to people? Like, uh, the, the difference, if only football players who are in the NFL could touch a football, if, if people couldn't, if kids couldn't play football, if people couldn't go in their own backyard and play football, if football was only for people who were the best of the best. You wouldn't relate to that game. You would be frustrated. Uh, or if in that instance, like, ah, this is, this is a rant that's not even worth going into, frankly, but uh, the internet needs all kinds of players, all kinds of game footage. And I'm here to show what an average experience on Hearthstone is. And frankly, an average experience on Hearthstone is designed by its nature to be a 50% or lower win ratio. And I've often ranted about how that's not good and it's not, not particularly fun, but that's what it is. Uh, I would love if Hearthstone somehow designed some systems where both players could win just even if it's just a random lucky winner you both get moved up in the ranks uh, but then that throws the whole rank system out of, out of whack certainly so yeah moving on PC gamer has an article the cyberpunk art of Benedict Sneez Snyder gave Runer a brutal beauty. Her name is spelled B E N E D Y K T space S Z N E I D E R. If you want to try and spell that, or you could just search like Runer a brutal beauty, and that probably would work too. <laughs> get you to this article if you want to read it. Like, Absolver was one of the games that that came out around the time Runer came out and I kind of wanted to play it but I think I'm gonna have to de-wishlist it because or I may have already de-wishlisted it. It's just not getting enough reviews and nobody really talked about it and more and more I'm Realizing I'm gonna have to give up on games that looked like they had some potential because of their visuals, but then had really bad gameplay mechanics. 
Um, let's see. Speaking of Akira, Runer definitely was an Akira styled Asian uh, game, at least in the advertising things. But Runer never really got a lot of attention. Uh, Runer was published by Digital Devolver and arguably um, Digital Devolver is just not a publisher that is good enough at being a publisher to to promote or spend the money on it. Uh, Runer on Steam is 87% positive of 127 reviews in the last 30 days and 90% positive of the 3,200 user reviews over its lifetime, and it came out September 26, 2017. So clearly, if this game is not on my wish list, which I'm pretty sure it is, I should add it. Uh, part of the problem with Runer, though, is it is just kind of a top down twin stick shooter, and and it's selling for $19.99. And, and so it's like in the cutscenes, in the side stories that that you get uh, that you get the art style. And, but clearly people appreciated that. I did want to quote, I mentioned this earlier, the Randy Pitchford uh, talking about and and then talking about talking about uh, trying to get Twitter to censor uh, comments or let him censor comments. So let's let's go through them word for word here, so I don't editorialize too much until the end. So July 29th, uh, which let's let's go back. Um, when was the Last time Randy Pitchford said something controversial, uh, because it, it honestly hasn't been too much. It's I think he came out and supported James Gunn again. Uh, not again, but yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah, July 21st, just read the CNN article about James Gunn, and if James Gunn were part of the family of Gearbox, I and we would have gotten hit their backs. Uh, so, July 21st was the last thing he said, something controversial. He said this about two or three times now, where he's like, I would have had these people's backs, but... He's the CEO of Gearbox. If he wants to hire those people, he could do that. He can offer them a job. He can offer them some support uh, in other ways. Uh, like if, if, if Gearbox said, we've hired James Gunn to write our next game, that would be an amazing deal. But all you've done is paid lip service to, to an ideology, uh, uh, a liberal agenda, while not really doing anything. You've just virtue signaled, is what he's doing. Uh, so, July 29th, eight days later, and in between that, he did post several, um, several other things. He retweeted several other things, some of which were smart Ooh. things to retweet, like, hey, we're releasing and publishing We Happy Few, so... Let's let's publish that. Let's let's promote that. That's really all he should be talking about on Twitter is is just promoting video games, promoting the games he's selling and publishing, and being a good figurehead. That that's all he is really. Uh, like a captain of a ship, the captain is in charge. But if you're the captain of a cruise liner, which is effectively what a video game company is. You're mostly there for show. You put on the, the fancy suit and and look like you're in charge and just make everything look good. Um, so July 29th he says, Hey at Twitter, 
I would post more thoughts and comments if I can have the option to disable replies and comments. That strategy works well on other platforms. Consider it, question mark. And let's see, this has 68 comments on it, uh, two retweets, which is an incredibly low amount of retweets, and 165 likes. Uh, so uh, I would speak in the world, in public, if I could remove the ability for other people to speak back to me. That's what he's saying. That's the di digital equivalent to the real world equivalent. If I can rob other people of their freedom of speech in the United States, uh, then I would I would be able to use my speech more. Uh, uh, it's on the face of it you, something that you think yeah maybe maybe this would make more sense totally but None that's not not it uh, it's a preemptive muting and, or a preemptive blocking of people which is not a feature that Twitter should have in my opinion or and definitely doesn't have now uh, you, he could certainly mute people after they've spoken. He can certainly block people after they've spoken. And in fact, you can also use the API to install Blocklist, and most of the video game journalists have done this where they have blocked people. And in Twitter, when you block somebody, they can't see your comments anymore. They can't see your posts at all. Uh, in fact, there was even a Supreme Court decision saying that the government entities like Donald Trump and his Twitter cannot block people because that is then an actual official government account and government entity removing the freedom of speech from a potential United States citizen. Um, so th this is a real big deal that very recently happened and Randy Pitchford obviously is not aware of it. Uh, Randy Pitchford then later that day, I assume, quotes this and he goes, the idea here isn't about blocking feedback. Yes, it is. It literally is. It's that Twitter has become more than a medium or a social interaction tool. It's also now, it's now also a news source. News professionals have already figured out that there are some cases where comments and replies don't help the goal of news. Uh, this is really just a false statement. <laughs> I, it, it's just as bad if CNN's own comments and sections are getting dis dis disabled. It's always been bad. It's always been wrong. Uh, the the only the only middle ground I'd even meet to this concept is if you're moderating out spam and things that are irrelevant comments. Uh, you probably go too far even down even if you start trying to moderate troll comments. Like uh, Let's see, there's 14 comments on this one. Can can we read them, though? Like, I don't even know how Twitter works half the time. It's like, mm, how, how does this thing go? Yeah, you have to click there. So many possibilities. Blah, 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 blah. I'm looking at all the comments. Like, I imagine Randy Pitchford has been all over this uh, muting people and, or blocking people, so I wouldn't be surprised if every single comment that's bothered to even be made. Um, inherently, I've said it before, Randy Pitchford should say less things on Twitter and publicly.
Like, here's one from 22 hours ago. Just, uh... But uh, here's one. So you want InfoWars to post unchallenged on Twitter. Uh, here's one. If you don't want to interact, just ignore the interaction. I think perhaps you just don't know how to, re to respond to detractors. Like when you directly insult your customers and people call you out on it. I you seem wonder. to think the answer is to not get called out on it. <laughs> Which, yeah, fair enough. Randy Pitchford, pro-censorship stance. Moving on. Like, bad idea. And I don't think Twitter's going to listen because I think Twitter's a little bit smarter than that. Inherently, it's it's not in Twitter's best interest to listen because, like YouTube, which is constantly trying to get more interaction time, uh, like, YouTube is constantly trying to get people to interact more on YouTube, watch more YouTube videos. Twitter is constantly trying to get people to stay on Twitter and interact more with people. And they don't care if it's a good interaction or a bad interaction. All they care about is you're on Twitter and you hopefully don't have an ad blocker, although I would recommend having an ad blocker. And if you don't have an ad blocker, the longer you're on Twitter, the more ads you look at, the more money they make the better they can, they can continue running and improving their service. It, it is contradictory to their own goals. Uh, that being said, Facebook certainly gets a lot of heat for not at least shortly somewhat controlling the crazy amount of clickbait and garbage that is on Facebook feeds. Uh, so, Twitter is walking a thin line either way, uh, but inherently, yes, removing or disabling comments as an option is a terrible idea. I can definitely guarantee you nearly 100% of all SJWs would start disabling all comments, always. And frankly, if they want a service like that, they can go somewhere else. And and that's it. Um, and Randy Pitchford inherently could stop using Twitter easily if he wanted to. Let's, we're done with the European account now, so let's move over to the American account. Like, he could just stop using Twitter. He should stop using Twitter. Like, that's the answer in a nutshell. Um, and we have about 25 seconds left in an hour so we need to put out the call I need somebody to challenge me or I'm going to have to re-roll this at some point so on the America's account if you haven't friended me RYDO number 1423 hop on and send me a challenge so that we can get the challenge of friend done uh, particularly here the Ragnaros festival fire festival screwed me definitely I, I could have gotten at least double this 80 to 160 and double like this 50 to 100 so, I don't think the new expansion is still that close away, though, but maybe we won't get to 10,000. Uh, that's fine. Uh, 50 packs for three accounts is 150 packs, and that's still more than enough to, to go. I think I'm going to have to start burning through stories a little bit faster, too. Uh, good news is we'll start running into more just games uh, to talk about anyways stay tuned if you're watching live that's going to be it for this recording if you're watching it pre-recorded as always i ask you to like share subscribe when you subscribe click that notification bell if you comment on my videos i probably won't censor you uh, you'd have to say something 
particularly offensive for me to censor you or something just straight up irrelevant or trolly or spammy. Uh, if you want a friend to follow me on any of the social media sites like Twitter, Tumblr, Google+, Steam, Battle.net, Facebook, all of those links are down below in the description. I ask everybody to friend me on Steam. And I'm asking if you want to support me that you gift me a game on Steam or a gift card. Uh, that's my only monetization policy right now, so if you see in, in the ads, that's going, that money's going to the, probably Disney <laughs> more than anything. Uh, that's it for this recording. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.